the things that I have seen work consistently over time and, the, and even some of the new things that I feel have the greatest potential for making the biggest difference with the largest percentage of kids. And when I say the largest percentage of kids, I truly mean that in my practice and what I've seen from other doctors who work with kids on the spectrum, a good 75 to 80 percent of just good, sound, basic biomedical intervention will help um, a good 75 to 80 percent of these kids. Okay? Um, some will be recovered, some will become much higher functioning, some will just become healthier individuals. Okay? But it helps a large percentage of these kids. As we stated, dietary intervention, good healthy diet. Methyl B12 injection, absolutely. Basic supplementation, all right? Calcium, magnesium, zinc, selenium, just a good multivitamin, multimineral, cod liver oil, essential fatty acids, things that just tend to fill in the gaps, plug up some of the holes nutritionally to just give support to the child's body. The other things that I've seen work very, very well um, are some of the antiviral treatments. I've become very impressed with things like Valtrex, uh, in the, as a medication in helping to reduce the viral load that many of these kids have. Um, and the nice thing about Valtrex or the antiviral medications like that is you're usually going to get a quick response. It will normally start happening within about three to six weeks, you know, as far as benefits that you might see. Okay, it's, it's, from my experience, it's not something that has to go on for years and years. The other thing that has been exceptional for most kids is treating the yeast. Anti-fungal therapy, anti-yeast therapy, usually ranks top, very high up on my list of things that are going to work very well. Okay, Nystatin, Diflucan, various herbal remedies, of various supplements that help address yeast. Um, in my experience, if you have a child who's doing biomedical therapy and they're doing well and all of a sudden they regress or they stop progressing, there's usually a couple things that are going to cause that. Number one is usually yeast. Okay, it's usually an overgrowth of candida of some sort. Sometimes you don't know why it happened, but you can kind of hang your hat that that's probably a good likelihood. If the child's on a diet, it may be an infraction of gluten or casein. Okay. Heavy metal detox treatment is critical, and it's my feeling that, all, that most, if not all, kids on the spectrum at some point should undergo some sort of heavy metal detox treatment. Okay, because we know biochemically that these kids tend to have weaknesses in their body's ability to excrete environmental toxins that they've been exposed to. And so there can tend to be uh, what we call retention effect, where kids just hold on to these metals. Um, so heavy metal detox treatment. So my recommendation for any parent, and this is how I would approach it, is if I was to spend a certain amount of time and energy and money and focus on what really worked and what I've seen work over the past nine years and having worked uh, in this field since 1998. And that is, is consistent dietary intervention, consistent methylation support with the B12 injections, consistent supplementation, um, treating the yeast, evaluating for yeast and bacteria, sometimes having to come back to that and making sure that the yeast levels are down, heavy metal detox treatment, and hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Um, if I was, you know, in a, if I felt it was highly suspicious, I would also try, you know, uh, to implement antiviral therapy as a trial to see what kind of effect that, that I would get. But those are the things that I have seen consistently work time and again over and over and over for the past number of years.